Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Now, Patriot's Day was technically a 2016 release, as it opened in limited markets on Christmas Day. But it receives a nationwide release on January 13th, and we're going to talk about it right now as my first review of 2017. I say all that because it must be noted that director Peter Berg made two films that were released in 2016, both true stories starring Mark Wahlberg. Deepwater Horizon and Patriot's Day. Now, Deepwater Horizon, I think, is the slightly better film, but it's a remarkable achievement anyway, because this one is pretty great as well. Patriot's Day is the dramatization of the 2013 Boston Marathon bombing and the events that followed, as seen through the eyes of certain specific characters, such as the FBI special agent in charge of the investigation, victims of the bombing, a few students who got caught in the crossfire, the Chechen brothers who carried out the bombings, and the real-life cops and first responders who rushed into danger to bring aid in a time of crisis. In a curious move, this movie with such a wealth of rich, well-drawn, and interesting real-life characters also completely invents one. This guy, Tommy Saunders, played by Mark Wahlberg. And there are sequences in this movie which contain the best acting Mark Wahlberg has ever done. Outside of Boogie Nights, of course. Now, Patriot's Day is at its best when it is a dramatic recreation of the true events that occurred in April of 2013. There are moments when I'm convinced that real-life surveillance videos and photos were used of the actual participants instead of the actors portraying them, and the effect is chilling. Also chilling is the minimalist score by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, which creates a tense sort of a buzz in your brain that permeates the chaotic horror of the violence on screen, but never becomes showy, you know, as if to glorify or exploit the actions of the terrorists. In fact, the violence here is dealt with so expertly by Peter Berg, with appropriate horror, but not shock value. It's restrained, but also efficient at mining the story for its inherent drama, and that's because it's done so matter-of-factly. Now. Just before what I believe is the very best sequence of the film, a firefight between the two brothers and police on a residential street in nearby Watertown, Massachusetts, the vibe is very much like an episode of that show Cops, just sort of following along with police doing their regular day-to-day -day jobs and about to pull over a car, even though you know it will not be a typical traffic stop. And when it goes bad, it does so quickly and intensely and with real stakes, and you feel completely immersed in an absolute nightmare. And that's a credit to director Peter Berg and his crew and the script which sets up rather quickly and efficiently characters whose fates we're invested in. Yes, even the evil murderers. Which, again, brings me back to Mark Wahlberg's character. He's completely fictional, and I think he's the only major character who is, and he didn't need to be. He's on the scene of the bombing, and then later, he's part of the team several towns away, which captures the last suspect. And the film has already set up some great, real-life characters all along the way, played by the likes of J.K. Simmons and Jimmy O. Yang, that are perfectly capable of being the audience's entry point into the story, once the story moves away from Boston. Real heroes that can be celebrated, but instead, we get this fictional guy just sort of running around, always turning up at the exciting parts like Forrest Gump, at the cost of the movie as a whole. As I mentioned, his performance is fantastic, but I think that the presence of his character does the movie a disservice. As mentioned, Patriot's Day is at its best when it's a straightforward dramatization of the actual events and actual people involved. Where it falters is near the end, where the narrative tension starts to dissipate a little bit and attempts are made to sort of bring the material in for a landing. First with a long speech by Wahlberg that you've seen in the trailer, where he tries to sum up everything he's learned about humanity. And then at some point, movie footage with actors becomes replaced by talking head interviews and footage of the real life people they are portraying. And then all of a sudden it's like you were watching the movie at home on disc and the special features just started playing automatically and now you're watching a documentary about the real life events. It mars the overall experience and sort of dilutes the impact to mesh the two things documentary and dramatic film at precisely the wrong moment. Ultimately, I award Patriot's Day a large bag of popcorn. There are sequences in this film that are some of the most suspenseful and thrilling in recent memory. Sequences where I was moved to blubbering tears by the heroism on display or on the edge of my seat in awestruck suspense. Its message is a little muddled by the way the movie wraps up, but don't let that dissuade you. This is an incredibly well-made movie that pays tribute to some inspiring real-life heroes. And this one guy who is completely made up. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more. And support us by clicking subscribe while you're there. And by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Patriot's Day in the comments section as well. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel. Boston Strong. Boston Strong. <laughs>